been a while since I posted a feng shui video. And today I'm gonna share with you wonderful tips on how to surround yourself with beautiful messages, images, and art in your home. After all, the images that surround you in many ways tell a story about you, your life, what is your joy, your passion, and so much more. Welcome, this is Lydia with the Feng Shui and Bazi Chinese Astrology channel. So welcome, if this is something you're interested in, please subscribe, like, and hit the bell so you don't miss a single video. So I have been posting for a while, lots of celebrity and political uh, Bazi astrology readings because I feel that as we unpack others' astrology charts, we're able to better understand our own charts and our own lives. But today I wanted to bring us back to the topic of feng shui, something I haven't talked about um, in a while. I usually post the monthly um, flying stars and the monthly predictions, but that's coming up soon because we are barreling through this month of June. So that video will be coming up soon, as in, oh my gracious, I think next week. All right, so this is a topic that is near and dear to my heart because I am an artist and a lot of the art that's in my home, I've created myself. Some of it, you know, I've inherited or I've bought and different things, but I love when I do a feng shui consultation, which I can do with you in your home on Zoom. It's amazing. Um, so when I'm looking at what's in your house, I want to see what are the things that you surround yourself with. Is it positive imaging? Let's break it down. Here we go. So as we look at, and this is a fun exercise, just walk through your home. As if you were visiting, walk through each room, look at the walls. I will tell you that in my 20 some years of being a traditional feng shui consultant, that many people have either nothing on the wall, which mean brings no personality at all, um, or they're, they've got a lot of what I call this stuff, you know, which can be fun, um, but certainly not for a whole house where you've gone to um, a home goods store and bought up a bunch of factory art, right? I put this one here because it's a fun background for my videos and it doesn't distract. And that's important. I don't want everybody looking at this. They need to be looking at me. Anyway, so, um, and the other thing I see a lot of are family photos, specifically of your children. I can tell you many stories where, um, and two families specifically come to mind. One wound up actually getting divorced, not that it was because of all the kids art everywhere, but it's a contributing factor because what we focus on expands. The law of attraction, it's the law of nature, right? You ever notice that if you focus on something, it seems more real. Even if you're like, for instance, if you're outside on a really hot day and you just focus on how hot and miserable you are, I guarantee you're going to be more hot and miserable. Whereas if you were focused on every little tuffet of wind passing over your skin and you were thinking of like ice cream, you're not going to be as hot. So that law of attraction is powerful. I've also seen a house that had no family photos and the person was lamenting the fact that their family wasn't involved in their life. And when I went to the family room, where were those family photos? On a top shelf, out of sight, out of reach, out of communication. I told her, try bringing your family photos down where they are at eye level so you can see them. 
bring all of your family photos into one centralized area so it's not a sprawl everywhere you look. Family, family, family. Even if you're a super family person. Every room has a purpose, right? Ultimately, every room should have a purpose. So I'm gonna walk you around the Bagua, which is the directions of your home, and give you information about what are the things that you can decorate in these rooms so that your house is telling a more balanced story that feels inspiring, uplifting, um, or calming, whatever it is that you want to be feeling. Another thing I see um, are what I call college art. You know, framed posters of your favorite band from when you were in high school, uh, things like that, that feel immature, that don't feel elevated, okay? And it's not to say that images like that can't find their way somewhere in a home, but not like in the main rooms. All right, so, and then I'm gonna give you some tips at the end that are specific to different types of art, let's put it that way. All right, so um, feel the energy. I love to do this. Walk in the front door. Like you've never been in your house before. You're welcoming yourself in. Look to the right, look to the left. What do you see? What do you see? Walk down the hall, look to the left, look to the right. What do you see? When you get around to going into each of the rooms and you're looking around, what do you see? What do you feel? What are you feeling? Take note of that. So water, of the five elements, I would say water is tricky. And you want to be really careful where you have images of water uh, to make sure that it isn't located in a place that is running water, running money, out of the house, okay? So again, we're gonna move around the Bagua. So here we go. We're gonna start in the east. The east and the southeast, I'm gonna bundle them by element. So the east and southeast represent the element of wood. This is my favorite because it brings the outside in and we want that to a certain degree, balance being key, we want to bring the outside in. We want to have fresh, live plants, not too many, always in balance. So this is the wood element. So we're looking at wood frames. That's natural wood frames, not painted wood. Natural wood frames. It can be painted blue or it could be painted green, but traditionally I like to see a natural wood tone here. This is the place for landscapes and trees and forests and garden scenes. Um, in the Southeast, it's the dragon. And in the East, it's the rabbit. Vertical stripes and the colors of all the colors of green. Did you know that humans see more tones of green than any other color? Also, you can bring in blue or blue being the neighbor of wood, blue being the color that makes wood active, um, it's nurtured, right? The, wood, the blue is nurturing the wood, or you could activate the wood. Be careful not to blend those two. You're either gonna choose the blue with the green, or you're gonna choose green with bright, fun colors. Think of a fruit bowl watermelon, cantaloupe, right? Raspberries, pansies, violet, um, all the bright, fun colors. So that's east, southeast. 
And again, it's all those radiant florals and landscapes. Love it, love it. And then we come around to the north. This is the water element. Waterfalls, rushing river, lake, beach scenes, the rain, blue flowers, blue birds, the colors of blue and black, and deep, dark purple, like eggplant, my favorite color. Metal frames would enhance the water element. Metal frames being um, black, silver, gold, copper colored. Um, and yeah, I said blue flowers, blue birds. Um, with the north, I also think of the sky, like the moon, um, stars. So then we come around to all of the earth directions. This is northeast, southwest, and the center of your home. And in the northeast, we have the cow or the ox. In the southwest, we have um, the monkey. And, um, and then we come to other images, for instance, mountains are really wonderful in this direction. It can also be desert or a beach. Earth tones, beige and salmon and um, brown and yellow and rust and terracotta, all those yummy earthy colors. When we look at the south, we wanna see images that represent the fire element. And this is like campfires and glowing fireplaces and deer and horses and fireworks and candles and dancers and actors and performers. Um, it's also the sun and happy people. When we look at the west and the north, oh, and the south, again, we're coming back to that fruit salad, watermelon, cantaloupe, red, green, you can bring in some green into that. Um, wood frames would enhance the fire. So in the south, we also want to add some of those fresh live plants. Then we come around to the west and the northwest, which is the metal element. This is like buildings and architecture, black and white photography, um, automobiles, trains, planes, all those things, political figures, roosters in the west the dog in the Northwest, colors of white, gray, silver, and gold. Okay. Um, if by chance you are looking at a room that is counter to that, okay, let's say you go into a room that is painted blue and it's in the South. How are you going to mitigate that conflict of watercolors in a fiery direction. Sometimes in a situation that extreme, I would recommend painting the walls. Eggshell white, it's your blank canvas, my friends, to really allow your art and the fabrics, your curtains, your pillows, your rugs to tell the story, not the wall color, okay? And if I were to look at family photos, we would go to the east. If the east is a front door, if the east is an area that is not really conducive to displaying family photos, go to the eastern side of your family room or living room, okay? Then, um, if you're looking at, and this is where I'm going to start giving you some tips. One thing I would highly recommend is look at the art that you're displaying, including sculpture, and make sure that there aren't a lot of abstract, sharp points coming at anyone where they might be sitting or sleeping. Don't display buildings and ships that met disastrous fates, like the Twin Towers or the Titanic. I can tell you 
My parents had over their couch for many years, this mammoth um, painting of a shipwreck. And the ship is on the shore, busted up, people lying, dying, and this woman clutching at her breast holding, I don't know, a child. It was always like, you know, when they downsized, they were asking me and my brothers if anybody wanted this. And we were all like, no, <laughs> nobody wants a shipwreck in their living room. Look at the images. Do you want to bring a disaster into your house? Do you want to bring in an image that is talking about something that is violent or painful or in any other way negative? No, we don't want that in our, in our house for sure. If you're single, a man or a woman, look around and notice I went to this house, this apart, this condo this woman had. She was in her 60s and she was really looking for love. And all of her art was of women. Not only that, but her bedroom had one chair in it. And in several places in her condo, there was only one a place for one person. I will tell you this. If you're single, always set the table for two. Always. And walk around and make sure that your chairs and everything is in pairs. And lastly, make sure that there is a balance of masculine and feminine imagery and beautiful, tasteful images of uh, couples engaged in something. So when you get to the bedroom, the main bedroom, um, I remember one, um, couple had an image of their wedding and their vows over their bed. And it was beautiful. Um, so in the bedroom, there are no religious figures. There's no imagery of religion or symbology of religion. Also, there is no imagery of children, family, or friends. This is your intimate sacred place where you do things you don't do in other places in your house or in the world, possibly, I don't know. But it is a sacred space and an intimate space. And if you are single, you can still display over your bed an image that is, again, a tasteful expression of love. It can be two lovebirds. It can be an actual heart. Make it literal, right? It can be two lovers dancing or embracing. Um, I love Etsy is one of my go-tos, but I highly recommend look around in your area and see where local art is happening. Go to a few art openings. You don't put it in your head. It's too expensive. You'd be surprised. Not to mention, I think it's a wonderful thing for couples to do to go and purchase that piece of art that's going to be over your bed or in your bedroom together. Um, what else can I say about um, make sure that there are no images of water in a bedroom. You will dream that you are drowning. It is not healthy, not healthy for mental health at all and not healthy for your libido or sexual perform um, your ability to have sex. All right any kind of water in the bedroom. Um, if you're in an office, it is really great to have at your back an image of a mountain, depending obviously on the direction your office is, um, a mountain or tall trees or a set of um, like a big tall, <laughs> I've got a chimney stack. You could also have a bookcase or filing cabinets. 
Make your mountain back there. That mountain is your support, okay? Um, it could also be somebody who you really revere. Martin Luther King Jr., Gandhi, who's your person? Put them up there. Give them the give them authority as your guardian, right? Um, don't display images of war and battle and hunting and animals snaring their prey, things like that. Um, I know some people like to display the head of a deer that they've shot. These are things that you've got to really work on, you know, as far as um, where this is placed and with what intent, okay? Um, you know, for instance, if you're going to display something that you're proud of, right, like your awards, how you've been recognized, look at the South, if that's an area of your li of your living room or your office even better, that's a great place to put it. If you're looking at um, your credentials, you know, where you graduated and your diplomas, those definitely want to be in an office. If you're looking at... Um, I can tell you, I went into a bedroom once where there was a gun rack between the bathroom door and the bed. And you want to know where the barrel was pointing the gun to? The people lying in the bed. I don't, it's like, I don't have a problem if this is your life. I'm not coming into your home to judge the way that you do your life. But what I'm saying is keep yourself safe. Let's see if we can rearrange the guns so that they're pointing into the bathroom, right? Um, I've also had um, someone that was going through cancer uh, treatment that was having horrible, horrible health problems, infections, going back, more surgeries, just awful, awful situation. And it turned out, that they had under the bed a sword that was used in actual battle that was historic and they didn't know what to do with it. So they stored it there. And in their bedroom was an image of a couple out running a storm. I don't think I have to tell you much more beyond that, right? I also had a woman that was going through a horrible time breathing. And I said to her, I actually wound up calling her because I was sitting at my desk and suddenly I <gasps> couldn't breathe. And I called her. I said, look under your bed. There's something under your bed. Sure enough, there was a gun. We need to really be mindful, friends, of where things are placed, what their message is. And if it is something that uplifts us, inspires us, or reinforces a negative thought pattern or violence. So all this to be said, this is a lot of info and I'm going to attempt, I'm not the best with um, technology, uh, but I'm going to attempt to put some photos of from my home of my art so that you can see how I bring art into my home. And um, I'll start with one of my more recent pieces, which is back here. Um, and... You know, I, I do all kinds of art. Usually I like to do um, portraits and things like that. But this one is uh, a little bit more spacey. <laughs> so anyway, the things that, because the thing is, this starts a conversation. And if your home is nothing else, it is a story unfolding. 
every day that you live in it. And how exciting is that? And what is that story you want to tell? And I'm going to end with this last tip. Put at the center of your home an image or a prayer or a poem that speaks of your heart because the center of your home, the center of your home is the heart of your home. And so that image, if it's even the symbol of a heart, the symbol of your family, what it is that you live for, put that there and see that radiating out through your home because that is the power of the center of the house. It's the wonder, one area that, that radiates and affects all the rest. So we definitely want something there that feels positive and uplifting. So I welcome your questions and comments. And until next time, be well. Welcome to my home. This is the sanctuary with beautiful tankas at the entrance of Radiant Unity painting. And here is a painting I did about one of my retreat activities, and this is the guest room.